During the past years, there have been significant advances in biotechnology, particularly in the fields of breeding, reproduction, and genetic improvements. Artificial insemination, in vitro fertilization, and the transfer of embryos are some of the technologies that have had a great impact in livestock improvement programs in developed countries. These new technologies increase the number of animals that can be bred from superior parents and increases the possibility of keeping the reproductive cells viable from the moment of follicular aspiration until embryo transplantation. Reproductive biotechnology is important because it is a technique through which we can multiply genetics. In this case, there are clients that want to multiply the genetic quality of their offspring. They look at the production level that each cow may have, and they may want to multiply that and extrapolate their best genetics faster. What can biotechnology do? Take an excellent cow, one that has excellent qualities in production. Normally, she can have one offspring per year through natural birth. But if we use reproductive biotechnology, you can have 12 or 15 offspring every year from the same cow, and you can use the same bulls. Another advantage biotechnology gives us is that we can use sexed semen. So, if I want to breed females, I can get only females. And if I want to breed males, I can get only males. Or if I want, I can get both males and females. Today, we are performing the follicular aspersion procedure. It consists of performing a transvaginal puncture with the aid of ultrasound. The idea is to extract the ova that are located inside the cow's two ovaries. We don't have to inject the cow with any hormones. During the entire cycle, you can work with the animal, whether they are cycling or not. It can even be performed in pregnant animals for the first four months of pregnancy. We always use 50 milliliter tubes, since that is what commercial systems are calibrated for, 50 milliliter tubes. Here we have two systems, one which generates a vacuum from the aspiration pump. Once the vacuum is generated in the tube, it generates negative pressure, which is transmitted to the tip of the mandrel. On the tip of the mandrel, there is a smaller tip. It fits into the needle. That is what is going to make it possible to come in and out of the ovary. The needle points in a fixed direction so we can perform the aspiration manually. Through rectal manipulation, we can locate the follicles so that they will be at the exact place where the needle will emerge. You have to be very precise to prevent lesions inside the ovary. You have to concentrate a great deal so as to always enter through the animal's estroma. You want to pull the needle out as little as possible. You want to take the follicle to the needle and not the needle to the follicle in order to prevent some of the different complications that can arise if this procedure is not performed correctly, such as adhesions or hematomas. But those problems can be avoided as long as the technician is careful and has the experience required to perform this procedure. The advantages of this procedure of commercial follicular aspiration are as follows. From the point of view of the donor, the animal can work without any hormonal stimulation, which will help ensure that the animal won't suffer any physiological alterations that we can work without difficulties. Commercially, we can use bulls that have a much higher genetic value. 
With a conventional semen straw, we can impregnate approximately 10 cows or 5 with sex semen. That is something that couldn't be done before. Before, we used the whole semen straw to inseminate and we could only use it on one recipient. Whereas now, the process can be repeated en masse and we can obtain faster genetic progress. When the sample is taken to the mobile laboratory, its contents are filtered. The good ova are separated from the bad ones. It is important to obtain ovum with uniform cytoplasm, with consistent cell clusters. They are classified on a 1, 2, 3 scale, with 1 as unviable and 3 as viable. The ova are transferred to a tube. It contains a transport medium and a maturing medium, and we fill the tube with gas so that we can transport it for up to 22 hours. That's the time frame we have to transport it, 20 to 22 hours. This is taken to an ovum transporter, which is kept at a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius, which is the body temperature of the donor cow. That temperature can vary, but only very little. 